Hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, I will demonstrate how to use the login API in Backendless. It is uh, going to be the basic login where you provide user ID and password. Uh, it is one of the approaches for login supported by Backendless. And for this, we will use Codeless uh, since it is going to be much easier to demonstrate visually how the login API works. For this, let's switch to the UI Builder. And in UI Builder, let's create a new page. Let's call it login API, click create. And in this page, we will skip all the functionality of gathering information from the user, putting it into the input fields and then creating the actual API call. We'll skip all that and we'll just hard code it as we did previously. But I will also demonstrate how to take advantage of the functionality that is built in UI Builder to do the login. So for in here, let's add a button and this button, it will say login. And then for this button, when you select the button, go into the uh, Codeless Logic Editor by clicking this icon. And in the on-click event, let's add the functionality, the, the actual login API functionality. So under Users API in the Backendless category, you will see the following block. It is going to be here it is, login user, identity and password. If you do not like this format where it's long block, you can right click and say select external inputs. Notice that there is an option to return user. If you don't select it, then it becomes a procedural block. If you want to get a hold of the actual user that comes back, then select the checkbox and you can save it in the variable or elsewhere. So in here, we will be hard coding uh, the value for the identity and the password. Identity is going to be uh, a value from, from a column that is marked as identity. In my application, it is email address. So for the identity, I will have to use the email address. I will use the test user that I created for myself. It is going to be mpillar at gmail.com. And then the password, I believe we left the password that was from Thor, which I think it is heavy hammer. Notice that there is a stay logged in uh, option. And then stay logged in is a functionality that is built into UI Builder and it, it is also available for all our SDKs. The way this works is that when this value is true, the user token, the one that we talked about in the previous video, Whenever it comes back from the server, it is saved on the client side and then is reused later for all subsequent calls. But if the stay logged in setting is set to true, that login, uh, that user token that is saved on the client side actually survives that specific session of your application running on the device or in a browser. Meaning that when you restart your application on the mobile phone or navigate to your web application, uh, built with a UI Builder or if it uses J JavaScript SDK, that user token will be available there and you can still check if it is valid or not. For that, there's going to be a separate video. But for now, you just know that when stay logged in is set to true, the actual session will survive and will last longer than that specific session of user working with your application in the browser or in a mobile application. Okay, so now this is in place. Let's just make sure that this uh, user is in the database. So the login will proceed and will work as expected. Let's switch to the back end. And in here, uh, here is my user. Let's just make sure that the password is exactly what I put in there in the, in the hard coded value. So it's going to be heavy hammer, type it in. And now if we go back to the front end, this is our logic in here for the on click event. Let's run this page and I will open the network traffic just to see what goes on the wire as far as the actual rest API call going to the server. When I click the button, here's the login request. And then you see in the payload, it is the user ID and password. And this is what the server sends in the response. By the way, this is the actual user token that we talked about. It is part of the response. And, and, and this user token is now saved in my web application. And then anytime I use any other API call to backendless, that user token will be passed in. But at this point, the user is logged in. Granted, this demo is very, very trivial. In fact, we're using hard-coded values, but normally 
what you would do is you would handle the login. If it is successful, then you move on to another page and then the actual application, the user can start using the actual application. So this was just a demonstration of the login API. How can you make it, uh, bring it closer to what it will be uh, in, in the actual application? This is what you will find available out of the box with Backendless. So let's create a new page and uh, type in the word login. Notice that uh, here you will see some of the templates that we provide out of the box. And one of them is the login screen. So here, if we select this template, it is marked as selected and click create, what you will get is a page that already has a ton of functionality related to login. In fact, uh, the, all the logic that you will see in here, in fact, let me switch to the actual login form. And uh, in this login form, this is all the logic that is in there. And, and you will see that the actual login um, API, it is happening right here, okay? Everything else deals with errors, like if the user, uh, if, if, if there is an error coming from the server and it handles specific use cases when the certain error codes, such as expired uh, uh, user token, uh, or uh, it also puts the, the, the value of the user of the, that comes back from the login into the variable. So there is a lot of stuff that is happening out of the box. And you can actually modify it in your application to, to make it, uh, to do it whatever you need to do in your app. Okay. And uh, as you can see, actual user, whenever it comes back, it is stored in the app data in uh, in one of the properties. But I'm getting too much into the actual UI builder where uh, we're really not covering that in this course. There is a separate course for all for everything related to UI builder. But in here, in this page, if I were to run it, uh, in fact, let me do that right here. I should be able to use my login. Click login, and uh, that actually worked because we have the login request, and this is the user that came back. But right now, this page lacks the configuration of where to go next, and you could actually program it uh, in in the codeless logic of what happens next. But everything related to login is available to you out of the box if you are using UI Builder. If you're using our SDKs, there is a similar functionality that SDK includes out of the box. But this is it. This is it as far as what I wanted to focus on uh, with uh, login API. And then the next uh, video will talk about using social logins where you can log in with an account that is in a, a social network or an auth to provider. Thank you for watching this video. And as always, happy godless coding.